true sangha is a sangha that has uh, the quality of mindfulness, concentration, insight, peace, harmony, brotherhood, sisterhood. And if uh, my sangha is a true sangha, the Buddha is there. So when I breathe out, I greet the Buddha in the Sangha. Dear Buddha, I know you are there because the true Sangha is there. And the Buddha is not something abstract. It is embodied by the practice of the Sangha. If the Sangha is a true Sangha, then uh, the Buddha is always there, also the Dharma. So the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha are not uh, something that is far away. It is right here, right, here, right now, in every one of us, and in our Sangha. Breathing in, I'm aware that the true Sangha is there. Breathing out, I smile to the Buddha in the Sangha. Good morning, dear Sangha. Today is uh, June the 10th. In the year 2009, and we are in the new hamlet of Plum Village during our 21 day retreat. The teaching on love uh, in the Buddhist tradition is very clear. We all need love. And love makes us uh, happy. And if love does not make us happy, it's not love. <laughs> it's something else. But the word love uh, has so many meanings. We have abused uh, the word love. When we say, I love hamburgers. <laughs> the word love does not mean anything. It means I'll, I like to eat. So you have to heal the word. Because the words uh, can get sick. They, have, uh, they can lose their meaning. And that is why from time to time we have to clear, to clear to heal the words, to disintoxic uh, the words, and to make them healthy again. So love is uh, a wonderful thing. In the Buddhist teaching, to love is uh, to be able to, to bring happiness, to offer happiness. To relieve uh, suffering. To offer joy. and to uh, transcend all kind of uh, separation barrier. Maitri, Maitri Metta is the first element of love. Maitri has a um, connection with Mitra. Mitra means friend. 
So love is friendship. And that friendship should bring about happiness. Otherwise, what is the use of uh, having friendship? To be a friend means to offer happiness. So if love does not make happiness, does not offer happiness, love makes the other person cry all the time, that's not uh, love, that's not my dream. That's the opposite. Uh, Maitri has been translated in English as uh, loving kindness. Từ Loving kindness should be able to offer happiness. So true love must have that element. And you don't just love another person. You have to love yourself. Because the self-love is the foundation for the love of uh, another person. If you don't know how to love yourself, to offer yourself happiness, how can you be able to love another person and offer him or her happiness? You don't know anything about happiness. (laughs) How can you offer happiness? So live in such a way that brings you joy, happiness. And then you'll be able to offer uh, another person joy and happiness. And we have learned already that happiness has something to do with suffering. If you don't understand suffering, you don't know what happiness is either. So understanding suffering is a very foundation of uh, of uh, of having happiness. We have talked a lot about that already in the past week, during the past week. We have learned that uh, a good practitioner knows how to deal with the suffering inside. A good practitioner knows how to recognize a painful feeling, how to embrace it tenderly, how to bring a relief. That's love already. If you don't know how to handle a painful emotion, a painful uh, feeling in you, how you can help another person to do that. So self-love is uh, crucial for the love of another person. So a good practitioner always learn how to recognize the pain, the, the, the painful feeling and emotions in him or in her, how to not to fight them, but to accept them, to embrace them and to transform, to get a relief. That is already love. And that is uh, the second element of love, which is uh, karuna. Karuna has been translated into uh, compassion. Karuna is the capacity of uh, 
relieve in the suffering. Of removing the suffering, of transforming the suffering. You love someone, you see him suffer so much. And you are motivated by doing something in order for that person to stop suffering. But if you don't know how to handle the suffering in you, how can you help the other person to handle the suffering in him or in her? So that is why a good practitioner always learn how to handle the suffering in him, in her first. And the Buddha's teaching is very clear. Whenever there is a painful feeling, an emotion like despair, like anger arising, you should be able to be there for, for it. Not to fight, but to recognize it as uh, existing. And you learn how to embrace it, accept it. And you use mindfulness and insight in order to, to understand its nature. And then you can get a relief, and then finally you can liberate yourself from your pain, your sorrow. This is what we have to learn as a practitioner. And the Buddha is very clear about this. His teaching is very clear, very concrete. He does not just say, uh, you have to love, but he indicates how to love. He does not just say, uh, transform your suffering. He tells us exactly how the steps in order to transform the suffering. And if you are to give a Dhamma talk, uh, you have to give the, dam, the kind of Dharma talk that can help people see concrete steps in bringing love and in uh, uh, removing suffering. So a good practitioner practice karuna for himself. He has to be compassionate to himself. He has to, to, to recognize the suffering, the pain, the difficulties within himself and devote time to deal, to deal with that and transform that. And because he knows how to do that for himself, he will know how to do that to help another person. So to love uh, oneself is very crucial for loving another person if you don't know how to take care of yourself. If you don't know how to love yourself, how can you take care of another person to love another person? The good practitioner practicing maitri know how to offer himself or herself joy, happiness, pleasant feelings, joyful feelings. And one of our, our Dharma talks during last week, we learned that uh, the Buddha in the Sutra on Mindful Breathing teaches us as how to bring in a feeling of joy, a feeling of uh, happiness. Using mindfulness, concentration, you can always bring in a feeling of joy and happiness. You don't need to use any money. You don't need to go to the shopping center. Uh, if you know uh, the art of releasing, the art of mindfulness, the art of uh, concentration, the art of uh, insight, and then you can bring a feeling of joy and happiness at any time. Joy. Mudita is the third 
the third element of true love. If love does not bring joy, why you have to love? <laughs> if love brings on, 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 uh, only tears, why should we love? <laughs> so it's very clear that true love should, should have joy. <laughs> and you have to provide you with joy. And there must be ways in order to bring joy to yourself. And if you know how to bring joy to yourself, you know how to bring joy to him and to her and to the world. It's so simple. And mudita has, uh, has been translated by joy. Uh, sympathetic joy. Uh, altruistic joy. I don't like that. Because if you don't have joy, how can you offer joy? So joy is for you, but for me also. So a true practitioner knows how to bring joy to himself and herself. So don't talk about altruistic joy. Joy is just joy. <laughs> if uh, you are really joyful, your joy is healthy, and then that benefits other people. If you are not joyful, you don't you are not fresh, you are not smiling, that's not for our profit. So if you are inhabited by joy and freshness, although you have done nothing, but we profit from you. So joy is just joy. So the Buddha advised us to generate the energy of joy of happiness, of compassion to us. And uh, and uh, the first recommendation made by Buddha is to leave it behind. There are things you can release. There are things we can let go. And that alone can bring joy and happiness. And this is an art. The joy and the happiness that are born from releasing, from letting go. There are things inside of us. There are things outside of us that we want to, to grasp. And if we have enough insight, we can let them go. And suddenly we have a lot of joy. So the first tactic adopted by true practitioners is to learn how to release, how to let go. One of the one of the examples we like to use in Plumlish is to is um, someone leaving the big city on the weekend to go to the countryside. The city is noisy, polluted, and we are tired. The city does not smell very good. A lot of uh, smoke. Uh, the air is not so good, so on Friday afternoon after work, you want to get out. It may take you 45 or one hour to, to get out of the city. And after that, you begin to drive uh, among rolling hills. You begin to see the sky the trees, uh, you begin to hear the birds, and you breathe the, the fresh air, and you feel so happy. You feel liberated. If you have not left the city behind, how can you have that joy? So leaving the city behind is a condition of happiness. 
if you if you are caught in something, especially when you think that uh, that something is so crucial to you, so you get you keep being get caught in that, and you continue to suffer, and you still believe that you need that, but in fact that may be an obstacle for your happiness. So if you have enough insight, you have enough courage to let it go. And after that, you feel free. <coughs> you feel free. free. Another example, your idea of happiness. This is not a uh, a material thing. This is a mental thing. Each of us has an idea about happiness. We think that we have to get this in order to be really happy. We, have, we think that we have to get that in order to be happy. We think we have to get rid of this in order to be happy. We have many ideas. I want that diploma, I want that, that, that position, I want this and that. And you, you have an idea as how to be happy. And a whole nation might, might, might do the same thing. A whole nation might think that this, uh, this path of politics, this ideology is the only way to, to be happy. Suppose um, you are a communist, and you think that Marxism is the only Marxism, communism is the only way to happiness, and you don't accept any other ideology. So you have a fixed idea, you have a conviction that Marxism is the only the way. Or uh, if you are a Buddhist and you think that Buddhism <laughs> <laughs> is the only way, <laughs> and you are get caught in the idea of Buddhism. But fortunately, the Buddha tells you that Buddhism is made only of non-Buddhist elements. <laughs> and during the last week, we only spoke about one thing to release any kind of ideas, of notions, of views, including the views of Buddhism. So you have an idea about happiness. And maybe you have not been able, if you have not been able to be happy, maybe because of that idea. Release that idea, and happiness can come more easily. Suppose there are many doors open to happiness. If you open every door, and then happiness has many ways to come to you. But the situation is that you have closed all the doors except one. And that is why happiness cannot come, because that door, happiness cannot come to. So don't close any door. Open all the doors. Don't just commit yourself to one idea of happiness. Removing the idea of happiness you have, and then happiness can come this afternoon. <laughs> so releasing here is releasing an idea. And many of us are caught in our idea of how we can be truly happy. So if you are a good practitioner, you sit down and you examine, you re-examine your idea of happiness. I attached to a number of things that we think crucial to our well-being. Although we have suffered a lot because of them, but we do not have the courage 
to release. We thought that it could not be safe for us to release it. But in fact, it may, the truth may be that we have continued to suffer just because of that. That may be a person. That may be a material thing. That may be a position in society. That may be anything. We have been thinking that uh, without that, we will not be safe. And that is why I have been caught by it. We need real insight. And that insight will bring us courage. And only with that courage that we can release it. And finally, if I'm free, we feel free. And happiness is possible. So everyone has to decide for himself, for herself. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Many of us get caught in things that we think to be crucial to us. We are not a free person because of that. That is why joy and happiness can be born from releasing, letting go. There's a story I found in the sutras. One day the Buddha was sitting with his monks. They have just finished their lunch together in mindfulness. Suddenly a farmer came by. He suffered so much, he said, Dear brothers, have you seen uh, my cows uh, going by this way? I have I had five cows, but I don't know why this morning they have all run away. And I have two acres of sesame seed. And this year the insect eat up all the sesame. There's nothing left. I think I'm going to commit suicide. I have nothing left. The Buddha, with compassion, looked at him and said, Dear friend, we have been sitting here for more than one hour. We have not seen any cows going this way. So please look for them in the other direction. So the farmer left, and the Buddha turned around and looked at his, uh, his monks a few dozens of monks sitting with him. And he smiled. And he said, my dear friends, you are very lucky because you don't have any cows. <laughs> <laughs> and these cows represent uh, what, you are, what you are caught in. So the practice is how to, to learn how to release the cows. So sit down and breathe in and out in mindfulness and concentration and identify your cows. Call your cows by their true name. <laughs> and to see whether you have the capacity of releasing any of them. The more you release, the happier you become if they are cows. So cow releasing is an art, is a practice. <laughs> and that idea of happiness you have is a strong cow. It needs great insight and courage in order to release that. And with freedom, happiness can come very easily. Suppose you want something very much, and you think that if you don't get that something, happiness will not be possible. You get caught in that idea. Because in reality, there are those who don't have that, but they are perfectly happy. Why not you? So there must be insight. So it is insight, right view that save us. 
And in the Buddhist tradition, we speak about salvation, emancipation, by insight, not by grace. <coughs> so letting go, releasing, is one technique that can bring about joy and happiness. Mindfulness is another method that bring about joy and happiness. Suppose uh, you are a young person You can practice hiking, you can jump, you can run, you can do many things. You're full of, of energy. So being young is a wonderful thing. <coughs> there are those of us who cannot do like, like that anymore. We are too old to, to do so. So, uh, you breathe in, and you feel yourself full of energy, young. Breathing in, I know that I am still young. And that brings happiness. <laughs> Mindfulness. Breathing in, I know I am aware of my eyes. Breathing out, I smile to my eyes. For non-practitioners, it may be something silly. But this is, uh, that can bring insight and happiness. When I breathe in, I focus my attention on my eyes. And insight comes that my eyes are still good enough. My eyes are still in good condition. It's wonderful to have eyes still in good conditions because you need only to open your eyes in order to, for you to enter into a paradise of forms and colors. Spring is there. There is a paradise there. And because you have eyes in good conditions, you can enter the paradise easily. You don't have to make any effort. Just open your eyes. For those of us who have lost our eyesight, the paradise is no longer available. And the, our deepest wish is to recover our eyesight in order to, to see the paradise again. <coughs> but now we still have eyes in good condition. So breathing in, I'm aware of my eyes. They are in good conditions. So in the inside come that you have a condition of happiness that is there, and you need to open your eyes in order to make the paradise of forms and colors available. And that is mindfulness. Mindfulness brings joy. Mindfulness brings happiness. Mindfulness tells you that you are still young. Mindfulness tells you that your eyes are in good conditions. Breathing in, I'm aware of my heart. You recognize your heart, and you know that your heart still functions normally. And it's very crucial, it's very wonderful to have a heart that still functions normally. There are those of us who don't have a heart like that. They are very fearful. They may get a heart attack at any time. They live in fear. We don't have that. So every time we are mindful of our heart, a heart that functions uh, normally, we feel happy. And happiness just comes like that in one second with mindfulness. 
So mindfulness help us to recognize the many conditions of happiness that, that are inside of us and around us. And that is why we have to remember that mindfulness is a source of happiness. It's a source of happiness. You don't need money. You don't have to go to the shopping center. You just need mindfulness. You have the capacity of letting go. Now you have the capacity of being mindful. And being mindful, you get in touch with the many conditions of happiness that are already available. That those of us who have so much condition to be happy, but we are not happy. Other people envy us. They see us as happy person, but we are not happy. We have so many conditions of happiness, but we don't recognize them. We don't treasure them. And that is why sit down, use a sheet of paper, and write down the conditions of happiness that you are having. You need one page, but after having filled one page, you need another page. And after two pages, you think that you still have other conditions of happiness. You continue on. You need many, many pages in order to write down that. So you recognize the conditions of happiness that you have. And if you need, you can ask a friend. Dear friend, what conditions of happiness I am having now? Please tell me, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a game, but this is meditation. You come back to your condition, and you recognize every condition of happiness that you are having. My eyes in good condition, my heart still functions normally, and thousands and tens of thousands more of conditions like that. And yet we are not happy if we don't recognize them. So mindfulness is to bring your, your mind back to your body, to be fully present in the here and the now, and recognize that. It's wonderful, this world. It's wonderful, the wonders of life. I am here. This is the kingdom of God. This is the pure land of Buddha. I can spend every second, every minute to enjoy. And happiness may be more than, than you can handle. <laughs> happiness may be more than you can handle. It's like a bakery. You go into the bakery, and you are free to eat. You are embarrassed. You don't know how to begin. So please remember, mindfulness is a source of happiness. If you have mindfulness, you recognize the many conditions of happiness that you already have. You don't have to run and get some more conditions. Stop running. You have enough conditions of happiness. The French ha have a, a, a song on, on that. Why do why you have to wait? Why don't be happy right now? What are you waiting for? You can be happy right now. Qu'est-ce qu'on attend pour être heureux? Qu'est-ce qu'on attend pour être heureux? Can you sing the song? Yes. <laughs> Go ahead.
We have to sing that more often. <laughs> you don't have to wait. You can celebrate now, celebrate our life and happiness life. And every step, every in-breath can be a celebration of happiness. Mindfulness is that. And that is why uh, in a practice center, what we do every day is to cultivate have a mindfulness. And then we have other sorts of happiness, like uh, concentration, 